Aloha, thank you for your presence. I just saw a hummingbird. <laughs> um, okay, so three years ago we already did an afterlife interview with Scott Weiland. I think it was the second uh, interview right after River Phoenix. River was um, our first interviewed in this channel. Um, but I've been feeling lately like uh, he would like to be channeled instead of uh, like we used to do interviews. Um, And I got a different, different insights, different uh, signs about him wanting to come through. Um, and I wanted first to talk about my personal experience connecting with Scott. I have already uh, shared in, that I began channeling in 2014, I mean consciously channel. And 2015, I was already doing readings um, and some healing sessions, channeling messages, but uh, writing messages for people. Um, so I was already involved in, in that kind of uh, in that kind of uh, work, and it was December. Midday of December 2015, I was in my kitchen and I was reading. It was late morning, around uh, midday, uh, and I was reading uh, news on the Rolling Stone, an article. I, I don't remember what I was reading, but I saw on the side um, a headline saying that the autopsy of Scott Weiland was already, the results were public. And I was like, what? I, I didn't even uh, know that he, he died two weeks uh, ago from the moment I was reading the news. Um, so I click on the news and I start reading and I was uh, overwhelmed with emotions and I couldn't understand why in that moment because I was not an STP fan, I mean an Eston Temple pilot fan or didn't listen to music at all or Scott Weiland saw his career uh, so I didn't have a personal connection like um, to feel that emotions so much emotions about uh, someone's passing, like it happens with other artists, um, that I felt more connected, I, I was already listening and knew about them. Of course, I knew about Scott because um, I am a 90s girl, <laughs> so it was impossible not to know about Scott. So as I was reading and I was feeling all these emotions, that I couldn't figure out what was happening, why it touched me so deeply. And I get all these uh, like flashes of um, being 11 or maybe 12 years old and seeing the video Big Bang Baby. And I think it was the first time I was, I was not into popular music, I was into old people music <laughs> um, and I was uh, in classical music, that kind of stuff. Um, and I remember seeing this guy and his presence was so um, magnetic. And I was like, wow. And I remember um, cutting um, a cover of a magazine where he appeared uh, with the band, with the STP band. Um, and, I, and I had it on my journal, one of my journals for many years. Um, but again, I was, I was not a 
fan of the music. Um, but I remember that moment, for example, it was 96, I guess. I remember hearing about his problems with addiction, um, doing jail time. And then from that moment, jump to 2000, uh, when the album 4 came, came out. And he was right out of jail and rehab. And he had this whole new look and also has to be like renovated. And he was, I remember seeing a making off of Sour Girl on MTV. And again, I was mesmerized just like I was when I was 11, 12 years old by his charisma, his magnetism. Um, and I remember that feeling proud, <laughs> feeling proud because it seems like he was able to overcome his addiction and he was moving on and he was doing his art with his with his fan, his friends, and he seemed very healthy at that moment. Um, all these, all these memories uh, appear when I was reading the the news. Uh, I didn't follow much of his career. Um, in between that, I remember watching the movie Great Expectations. And I love one of the songs, and I was surprised to see it was Scott Wyden in his solo career. Lady, your roof bring me, brings me down. Um, it was a movie that I love, and I love the soundtrack as well. Uh, so those was, so those were my only more personal experience with, with his with his presence, his artistry. Um, and I was pondering on it when, when I, I turn and I look at the, um, the door in my kitchen in my previous home and I see Scott Weiler with a jacket, no t-shirt, leather pants, the heavy eyeliner, um, rings, um, the whole thing, <laughs> and he sat next to me, right next to me, and he started um, talking about his life, about his death first, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. his death, and then about his life, and I don't know, we talk until lunchtime, I suppose, uh, and he would come he would pop up almost every day and we would talk and then he would make me listen his music and i would be like but i don't like i don't like this i don't like that and he would be please <laughs> and made me read all the lyrics he really want um to show himself um and it i could feel that he really needed to be understood um, and then he started connecting with friends of mine and other people and it was like he was visiting every psychic in the city. Um, um, and with time, and he, then he began appearing on dreams and with time I felt him, he became a guide. Um, A very special and unique guide and it happened for other people that uh, I knew and that I know. Uh, he has a very um, just very uh, like his stage persona and I guess he's more um, private personality. It's a mix of both uh, of, of those traits um, I think he's perfect guide for um, creative people that struggle with with focus 
um, obviously people um, struggling with addiction and wants to uh, overcome um, but well um, <clears throat> he's um, I remember sharing with friends and they would say that he's kind of pushy <laughs> like he will if he knows that you can achieve uh, something bigger something greater if, if he knows that there is something you have to share he will push you to write to create to sing um, uh, he's insistent <laughs> that's something that some people do not appreciate um, but sometimes you need a kind of and that kind of coaching. So yeah, that's my experience working with his spirit. And I think I don't have anything else to say. Okay, the video cut for no reason. And I was already channeling. <laughs> so let's try again. You'll have to repeat yourself, Scott. Here it is, the one and only Scott fucking Wyler. Thank you for your interest on what I have to say. I am not by any means a wise man. I was definitely not. I was incarnated and even in a spirit, I have a long way to go <laughs> to achieve wisdom. Or let's say, remember, remembering my wisdom. I'm on the way. The reason of why I can guide others is because, yes, death gave, gave me some experience and what you consider the afterlife. I say you consider because it's more like it's just one line of life and death is kind of a corridor, something like that. But it's still the same life, so it's not actually afterlife. It's the same life in different conditions. So going through it, it has gained me some insight that you as someone incarnated do not have access to and this puts me in a particular position where I can share and support others in their journey but that doesn't mean I have all the answers or anything like that Life is still a mystery, and that's that's a good thing. That even even in the spirit, you can be surprised by life in positive and negative ways. Um, some people think that heaven it's some kind of never ending either experience of peace or happiness um, it's not let me assure you of course there is a big relief mm, from transcending the physical body 
but it's just like another kind of work. We keep working, we have a job, and the job is knowing yourself. Hmm? Self-awareness, understanding your past, forgiving your past. You know, there is a lot of entangle with that. Your relationships, your ancestry. And then these news, these new connections with my pupils. Apprentices. Every connection, it moves, stir up things within. So, as you might suspect, it's a long, infinite process of of learning, discovering, and then understanding things under a completely different perspective. And it happens every time. It's like awakening from one dream to another, and another, and another. So, things I want to share about. Well, one of the, the biggest topics that pop up in the mind of people when to think about me is addiction. What I have to say about that? It was a burden, of course. But with time, I, I learned to appreciate it and even see it as a gift. Addiction taught me many, many things. It showed me how strong I was, that I had the will to overcome it, to get clean, to get sober. I could go to the lowest point of being human and navigate through it, not getting lost completely and come again to the surface and achieve great things. I could have learned that about myself in other ways. But there is a family pattern there. I was given the opportunity to experience what relatives already went through in less successful ways because, yes, I die young, but still I left a legacy, something that many of my relatives that experienced addiction in different ways were not able to, they were not able to express their own creativity and leave something for others. My addiction was pretty hard, but still I didn't become completely a complete obstacle.
for me to create music, music that is still meaningful, I believe. There is a um, certain belief that once you die, you kind of um, completely transcend your problems, struggles, difficulties, illness. And it's true until a certain degree you are able to transcend, to learn and to remember in a much more um, clear, quick way. But it doesn't mean that you leave everything behind. So just like if you have a physical illness, you get the relief from the physical pain. You still might work as a spirit through the spiritual and energetic causes of that illness. I mean, it's the same way with addiction. Yes, I was able to overcome mm, the physical. Um, symptoms of my addiction, um, even uh, mental ones, but still I had a long way to work through emotional roots and the energetics causes behind my addiction and it's still there. In my life, when I was alive, I went to rehab more times than I can remember. And I still go to rehab from time to time in the afterlife. This might shock you, but let me explain this to you. Just like in life, I needed the support of doctors, nurses, therapist and to be in a safe and contained space although it wasn't always like that in the physical but I was able to to have that that environment sometimes it was even more toxic than just average average life still I needed that physically and I'm still the same I'm still Scott Wyland I have access and I have connections to other aspects of myself that are more uh, cosmic expanded whatever but right now you are hearing from Scott the one that yeah that guy The one that did great music and made big mistakes. So just like I need that kind of support in the physical, I still need from time to time that support in the afterlife. And you may say, so then how you can be a guide? But it's just like a sponsors. You can become a sponsor. And you can be a great one. You can be a great teacher. And I still have a some mess to deal in your life and you're gonna still need as a sponsor to go to your therapist and sometimes repeat those past mistakes and it doesn't delay um the fact that you can still share your insights, your experience, and you can still support others in the right moment.
so yeah I go to and many others musicians that deal artists in general but deal with addiction in their lives maybe not rehab but they go to therapy it's different of course but there is a lot of similarities so yeah it's it's like I say we keep working it's not like we sing in the clouds and play the harps and we are in the nirvana experiencing nirvana the whole time sometimes it gets nasty sometimes it gets messy sometimes yes it gets joyful and very high vibe but it can be always like that so let me talk about my music I was um, I um, I experienced more more critics and backlash than other artists in my in that in that time It was, it was the way I look, it was the way I sang, it was the lyrics. There was always something that people, critics, didn't like. It was meant to be the way I, I came here to be the disruptive one. Mm. I, I was meant to deliver a message to a lot of people, but also I I would do in a way that I would trigger a lot of people in different ways. I do not regret that. I I I like to be the different one from from that period. Usually people talk about the bands of those years and they mention all these artists, singers, bands and we are kind of... we are part of the group but not exactly and I like that. It was supposed to be the way, that way. I was kind of the underdog between the underdogs <laughs> so in that way I would I would reach um, to those ones that felt more isolated more misunderstood more rejected the ones that have a more twisted mind And I still do. And this is why not only people struggling with addiction come to me or ask for my for my guide, my guidance, but people with depression, people that thinking ways that goes against the norm, against society rules and I'm not talking about psychopaths or sociopaths or anything like that but people that are meant to go against um, what is supposed to be normal and I mean in art, music, sex everything <laughs> it 
Even people that didn't like much my music, they would recognize my stage presence, my magnetism. And it's not something, just something because of my being a Scorpio. That is the most um, evident trait. But like for many um, frontmen, um, band leaders, we echo uh, a past where we were magicians, shamans, and we had a very important role within society, within the community, and we act as this conduit between the spiritual realm and we deliver messages uh, in front of a big audience and and we perform ceremonies and if you see um, uh, bands in a stage or um, a musician that is really 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 doing it sings and not just once the flashes and the money <laughs> but it's really uh, really wants to um, to do good music you will see there is a lot of shamanic stuff going the, happening there and there is this sense of uh, being in a big ceremony in this big collective purge sometimes sometimes it's like a purge sometimes it's like a celebration So we echo the kind of life and, and we do this and this um, shamanic thing in a different way because it's a different time and we deliver a message in a different different manner for different people that access information and, and the music is such an easy way to, to deliver this kind of messages because it bypass the intellectual mind. Well, there are some people that will get trapped into the meaning and, and, and all that of the lyrics or um, the structure of the music and there were others that they will really go through with the senses and experience music in a more uh, transcendental way. And it's a way of uh, exorcising your past and your emotions. And also creating uh, your future. You sort of paint uh, what you want through the lyrics, through the music. And you share it with others and they might feel relate they relate with that and they want to the same so yeah so if you don't you say I don't really like stone temple music stone temple pilot music or or velvet or my sort of career, give it another try. I was not always in my my best self when I was creating because besides music I had other passions and one of my passions was um, going beyond the limits of my physical body and because of that I was not always able to be in the best in the best shape physically, mentally for my music so there is a lot of songs that I, I could have I could have um, gave more of myself there but I was not able but still I 
I think there is a lot to take in my lyrics and the music we were able to create together as a band. So yeah. <sighs> that about music. Let me talk about love. Well, that was another of my passions, being in love. I think, I really think, our life uh, doesn't doesn't make sense if you're not in love. Um, when I was <coughs> when I was incarnated. I was always looking for that, for that feeling. Um, I wanted women to provide uh, that kind of connection and the passion. Many times my expectations were bigger or were in a completely different direction. And not only women, um, friends, relatives, you want that, you want to experience that kind of deep connection. You want to feel that you're not losing time. Uh, you're not losing your energy with the person you are working with, sharing with. You want it to be meaningful. Mm. But I couldn't understand that, that when I was not feeling that, it was not anyone to blame. But it was because I was not... I was not in love with myself, so if you don't have that within, no matter how much the other person shares of themselves, you will not be able to, to connect to it, to accept it, to accept that love. So, I was always on the road, looking for that, for that kind of high. And I heard many in the way. I'm still in the process of making amends with those, with those persons. And here in the spirit, um, I would say I'm beginning. <laughs> I mean, you need to stop looking um, for the kind of uh, freshness. I, I always want something new, something exciting. I was always looking for the new exciting thing. And I was not able to appreciate what I already had. And I felt that... Um, Aloha. So my phone cut the recording the other time. I didn't have enough memory. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that Scott shared and I wasn't able to record it. So I'm going to give him another chance to, to share whatever uh, he wants to. 
I didn't want to make another video because like a part two uh, because usually people will only watch part one so let's just make one large video I hope not that large um, and I wanted to add when I was talking about him as a guide and I was saying how he was a great guy for creative people struggling with um, um, a lack of uh, purpose or encouragement. Um, he's also a um, great guy if you are not able to express uh, what you want to say, if you're afraid of how people will react to your to your actions or your desires. Um, if you think too much about how others uh, will react to you um, instead of what you really want, what you really want to express, what you really need to communicate with others. So he's a very good guy um, with this with this kind of blockages. Um, and he will um, I think he will test you <laughs> because uh, sometimes he will um, how what is the word? Not to push you exactly. Uh, like he will insist about something, and it's not like um, he's trying to uh, push you to do something that you don't want to. But he he will make you stand for what you believe. Like he um, um, to be clear about your boundaries. He will give you many opportunities uh, to be clear about your boundaries. Also, he has. A great sense of humor that not much people understand and I mean Scorpio humor if you know what the Scorpio humor is like it's not for everybody um, so if you if you're good here in the spirit it will be a lot of fun <laughs> because he has really great jokes um, and he will always amuse you at the worst moments <laughs> when you're not supposed to laugh in public or stuff like that so have fun uh, connecting with God and if you really want to work with him as a spirit guy um, you will learn a lot of stuff about yourself he's not like uh, bubbles and rainbow kind of guy not at all he's not afraid of going if, if you know about his music, his lyrics, you you know he's not afraid of going into the into the dark side, and um, he will support you while you go through while you go to that to that space, and you have to face stuff about yourself you've been you've been avoiding. He will stand with you. Um, I think in my case he was a kind of a gatekeeper for some time um, because he's very strong he's like no bullshit <laughs> no bullshitting around so um, if you need <clears throat> if you're struggling with your own boundaries especially with the spirit world he he can be a very a very great gatekeeper helping you to the limited uh, who you want to come to your space and what moments he will support you with that because he's very clear about uh, what he wants the way he wants it so he will reflect that into your own uh, process so yeah I wanted to add that and now let's give him uh, space um, also the the first part of the video um, that it was cut I was explaining what, why I was chewing gum it was his suggestion, so I could guess, I guess, relax. But I guess it was more about him. <laughs> so I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it now. I have blue solar water to make this better. Um, and I cannot listen to music because um, I have no battery for it. <laughs> so, okay. <sighs> Thank you. 
Thank you, I don't mind interruptions. Um, hope you don't mind either. Um, there were some uh, things I wanted to say. Um, yeah, about mental illness. Because I, I talk about addiction, but I want to be clear about this. Um, I think it's really amazing what's happening right now, that people are very uh, open about their mental illness and their struggles with them, um, how they are these digital communities and they support each other and they talk about this openly and sharing resources. It was something that was not in my time. I wish I could have, I could have that. Um, but it was part of my, my purpose too. I was very open about it, about my addiction. I was not so much about my mental illness until the late years of my life. Um, because there was, there is always still, even now, this stigma. Um, I was a junkie and then I, I, would, I would become the, the crazy guy. Um, I was already seen as crazy, but mentally, mentally ill, uh, that would be, yeah, very different. So, um, but remember that you're just like your addiction, it's, you're not your addiction and you're not your mental illness. Whatever uh, diagnosis you have, that's not the end of the story. Uh, you don't need to carry your sickness all your life and you don't need to to see your mental illness as a course or support them. Um, of course, it's uh, it's awful when there is this fake positivity about uh, um, being mentally ill, like um, you, you you got this and that kind of stuff. Uh, it could be worse. <laughs> Other people are doing worse, yeah, like... Are you in my skin? No. So, um, but what I mean is that it doesn't have to be something that you have to suffer or something that you have to carry as uh, a burden. It can also be a source of creativity, as it was for me um, many times. A lot of people have had great ideas during manic episodes. Um, people have been able to create a great... Uh, novels or pieces of art because they were they were willing to go to the deepest um, deepest parts of themselves and face darkness in in the midst of depression and, and they were able to take those um, take those feelings from there and transform them translate them into into pieces of work uh, that people were able to to relate with and that was the case for most of the the wild ones or the spirits that uh, relate with this kind of a uh, wild uh, energy of creation. Um, so yeah, we can we can change the perspective about mental illness and beyond uh, beyond something that uh, it's constraining you or making you feel stuck. It 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 can also be uh, a door of access to different perspective, to different dimension. Is that something that it, Eskisoid people um, um, experience a lot. They just they don't have the tools. They don't have the support that um, they would have in, in in the past in communities where you could go to a shaman and they could understand what you were going through. Now we only see the more physiological uh, perspective, neurological understanding of, of these of these illnesses and we don't we don't uh, I, I, I think people are beginning to, to understand that the spiritual and the energetic connection but it still is not is not a common the common thing um, so I have um, I have a good, great hope that this this movement of a mental illness awareness will keep evolving and and not just stay in into the into the neurological uh, understanding of it and and will relate to to the spiritual side and 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 also some people only understand spiritual or the energetical side and they completely deny the the, the physiological uh, 
biological stuff of it. Um, sometimes you will need a, uh, you will need uh, the help of um, of, uh, of medicine of of modern medicine. It's, it's not something. It's not something bad. It's not. It's not. It, it can be done in a bad way, but it can also be very positive. Uh, so I wanted to to say that. Uh, about mental illness um, and, and also that in a way we are all bipolar and I'm not saying by that, that I'm not trying to to diminish the experience of bipolar people uh, people have been diagnosed with bipolarity it's just uh, it, it's the way this reality works the, the way the, this reality is created is with two different polarities and that's that how can creation be manifested um, it, it just some people like me we were not able to manage our emotions or um, and they they would overwhelm us and we were not able to make the, the right choices and but we, when I was, even when I was in Carnegie, I was able to, to see the craziness that everybody had inside. Um, just like I said, some people had a better system of support, um, a better awareness of themselves, um, so they could deal with, with the fluctuations of emotions uh, in a better way than I was able to do. And when I mentioned before that I go to rehab in the afterlife is 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 not like I'm being actively um, an addict. It's more about understanding my patterns of, of, of thoughts, my addictive pattern of thoughts that make me crave for certain experiences, certain feelings, certain emotions. And I can I can give my power away by doing that. So I have to I, I need a, a rehab and I need my, my own guides and my own system of support so that I can find again my 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 balance, my axis. Um, addiction is, is not just um, about about doing drugs, about doing uh, uh, illegal things. It's, it's, it's about this this um, these this patterns that you repeat from, from your family, from your parents, from you ancestors or from the collective you are you are living with you are, you are experiencing um, so it's more about recognizing that so of course I'm very willing to give my my support through the process um, of understanding mental illness of understanding addiction and accepting it and and come to a point where you can create something with it and not just and not just suffer it. Um, yeah. I don't know one last thing. <clears throat> um, you're alive. Don't don't forget that. Sometimes it's a funny thing that as spiritual people tend to idealize the idea of heaven and whatever and then like they they crave for it's almost like they crave for death for the moment of dying so they can reunite with their loved ones with spirits or see the archangels or jesus or whatever and um, whatever the idea you have of heaven is is what you will experience and even even for me as a spirit whatever idea what whatever I'm experiencing of heaven right now is just because of the thoughts I had about it and, and it, so that's why heaven is not a stagnant thing it's something that's always evolving for everybody um, but, but what I mean is that people don't realize it um, and, and and they forget to live they forget their lives or, or they they see their body as a prison on um, like living is some kind of punishment. Um, even people th think they are on earth 
and then they are enslaved and it, this is true, this is a reality for many people but not for the collective, it, it used to be like that I think but it's not for the majority of the collective and uh, they do have um, um, a certain a certain access to, to, to freedom that in, in other times we didn't have um, but still it's it's um, in a way a very appealing to have someone or to blame someone for your sorrows but what I try to say is that um, yes living on earth uh, it is painful everything is painful about living on earth because you are feeling all the time so for some people touch is a very nice thing and for others it's it's really painful some people feel physical pain by being a hug or touch and, and others and for others um, there are rougher things that feel very pleasurable so it's 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 about the experience of each body and the pain that you you have um, um, so even just as emotional pain can be a source for creativity but also also physical pain it means that it means that you're alive it means that uh, you can you can be touched by things you can be touched by people you can be transformed by them um, so it is it is in fact a gift um, and and the way you experience pain uh, it, it's about it's about your your trauma it's about uh, the trauma you carry from from your parents from your family your ancestors uh, even the collective even beyond even galaxy galaxies and other dimensions and um, acknowledging um, the source of the, the memories of the pain it's storage in your body it doesn't mean that your pain will go away but it will give it a meaning and and eventually you can you can create a purpose for it um, so yeah enjoy enjoy you have a body I will love that I love smells, I love um, touching, I love textures and it's something that you can't quite replicate here so you are, you are blessed for, for having a body do not long for just being a spirit it's not, it's not really that fun <laughs> so yeah, I think, that's, I think that's all Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm, so, I'm sorry for all the cuttings. Um, it's been a really long session. <laughs> and thank you, Scott, for your patience. Because my phone kept, kept cutting and I, <laughs> and then there was a lot of a lot of things that weren't able to record. And he tried to to repeat himself um, but I think a lot of things uh, were lost and uh, that's that's a pity but well um, I hope I hope the message uh, finds those that need it uh, thank you thank you for watching yeah <laughs> okay it's just I'm, I'm very tired because I it doesn't seem like I've been recording for an hour or so and dealing with my technical issues thanks to Mercury <laughs> um, so yeah it's, it's, it's been quite a quite a day okay thank you so much uh, for for watching and please uh, if you enjoy it like uh, subscribe um, I never ask for that kind of stuff, <laughs> but I really I, I enjoy the presence of the wild ones in my life and I know that many people 
will do also so I, I want them to to connect with more people and work uh, with them share whatever they inside insights they have so uh, thank you for liking for subscribe for subscribing and for sticking uh, with us and see you next time